Hey guys, Desolate Magic here. It's finally time for some more Baldur's Gate, whatever the heck it's called, Commander thing spoilers. Oh, I know what it's called. I just thought I'd match the uh, public sentiment in the community here about this wonderful product. I haven't seen anybody excited about it or saying they're going to buy it, which is kind of shocking because uh, no matter how weird or obscure or different or whatever something is, some portion of the community is like, oh yeah, okay. Have not found that person or people yet. So anyway, let's start with Wizards of Thay. It's a 4 cost 3 3 human wizard, and uh, blue of course, and it has Myriad, which is whenever this creature attacks for each opponent other than defending player, you may create a token that's a copy of this creature that's tapped and attacking uh, that player or a planeswalker they control, either one, exile the tokens at the end of combat, so you just kind of split and attack everybody. Kind of neat, I, I just don't like multiplayer and magic at all, it doesn't really work. Well as far as like fair and balanced, but just playing for fun, sure, you know, why not? So it also reduces the casting cost of instant sorcery spells by one, and you may cast sorcery spells as though they had flash, so pretty all-around powerful. Next up, well, I waited as long as I possibly could, uh, and still, basically, none of these are in English. Thanks, wizards, you're really encouraging people to look at these spoilers and pay attention to them. Anyway, uh, Scanos Dragonheart. This is a 5 cost 4 4 legendary creature dragon ranger, and whenever Scanos Dragonheart attacks it gets plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the greatest power among dragon cards in your graveyard or other dragon creatures you control. Ooh, then choose a background. If you really think about it, he's kind of like a vanilla dragon, but I don't know, the, the background part, I could see people doing that. By the way, I kind of took the pulse of the community there on multiple different websites and stuff, and it seems like everybody's kind of unhappy about the major mechanics in this set. People really don't like initiative, people really don't like what anything in the set's gonna do to Popper. Yeah, it. this is not a good product, it's just not. So next up, we've got Bone Summoner Cleric, even though it's Clergy Convoker of Bones, but anyway, it's a 2 cost 2 1 creature human cleric, and if you pay for and sacrifice Bone Summoner Cleric, uh, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, activate only as a sorcery. A self-destructing resurrector card. I mean, just pay one more and just resurrect the card. Oh, wait, this is Commander. Paid, like, four less into it. Next up, Sword Coast Sailor. Oh, Sword Coast is awesome. Uh, it's a two-cost legendary enchantment blue background, and Commander creatures you own have whenever this creature attacks a player. If no opponent has more life than that player, this creature can't be blocked this turn. That is insanely annoying. Commander damage is a thing. That actually really is going to piss people off, because backgrounds are, like, automatically a, a plus one in the deck, kind of. Go look it up, it's complicated, but, uh, yeah, that's that's crap. So next up we got Rasad Yin Bashir. What the heck is it, Yin? Why isn't it capitalized? So, legendary creature, human monk, and it's, a uh, three cost white, zero, three. Oh god, pacifist, right? Uh, each creature you control assigns common damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. Yeah, that's a pacifist. And then, uh, whenever, whoever this is, attacks, if you have the initiative, double the toughness of each creature you control until end of turn, choose a background. That is insane. I didn't think they'd pile something onto initiative without also, like, generating initiative, but here it is. Oh, and then choose a background, because of course. Uh, next up, Port of Gond. Uh, they translated it as Gond's Gate, I guess, if they're gonna do Baldur's Gate, sure, why not? But, uh, anyway, it's a land, it's a gate, oh my gosh. Oh, I just realized this is French. Anyway, uh, gates you control into the battlefield untapped, oh, that's fun, tap it to add one colorless, and then add one, or tap it and add one mana to your mana pool of any color a gate you control would produce. So, in other words, Supergate, the last thing we needed ever again in any product was Gates. That is so cancer with mazes and etc. It, it's unreal. Gate Crasher Ram? Nah. Nah, we don't need that. But what we do need is Geode Golem, I guess. Uh, so it's a 5 cost artifact golem with trample, 5 3, and whenever Geode Golem deals combat damage to a player, you may cast your commander from the command zone without paying its mana cost. Okay, that's gonna be an expensive card. All these, like, must have auto include, although that might be a little generous, um, cards, they've all been uncommons. I mean, I'm not gonna complain, cool, that's gonna cap it at like two, three bucks, but man, is this set not gonna make wizards any money. But see, there's an upside though. There's an upside. People never mention this. The good news, the silver lining, if you will, is that Hasbro's not gonna make any money off it either. So, next up, Avenging Hunter. It's a 5 cost 5 4 Dragon Ranger with Trample and Green. And whenever it enters the battlefield, you take the initiative. Real simple, but 
Real garbage. Next up, we got Trailblazers. Torch, it's a four cost artifact equipment, colorless, and when it touches the battlefield, you take the initiative. Okay. And then equip one, and whenever equipped creature becomes blocked, it deals two damage to each creature blocking it. That's kind of utility and interesting. I'm not sure about the power level for commander, but neither are you. So many people like to come in and say, oh, well, that's too powerful, or that's not powerful enough. First of all, this is OP as balls for Popper, but don't even get me started. And secondly, commander is policed by your playgroup, okay? One playgroup might be like, this is unacceptable, and the other one's like, total free-for-all, the bigger the better. So just keep that in mind. Next up, ooh, another mythic, okay. Uh, Karlak, Fury of Avernus. Hey, speaking of that, uh, Spiderweb Software is working on a new version of Avernum. Very related. Anyway, legendary creature Tiefling Barbarian, 5-4, and whenever you attack, if it's the first combat phase of this turn, oh, come on, untap all attacking creatures that gain first strike till end of turn after this phase. There is an additional combat phase, it's broken as hell, and choose a background. I hate bonus combat phases. They're just so complicated, stupid, annoying. I hate them. Next up, we've got Algent de Volure de l'Ombre, maybe. Oh, wait, that's right, it's French. Vols don't exist, they're just a myth. Uh, Lumber? Anyway, somehow that's Agent of the Shadow Thieves. I don't know how you get that from that, but sure. So it's a two-cost legendary enchantment background, and commander creatures you own have when this creature attacks a player if no opponent has more life than that player. Put a, one, a plus one, minus one counter on this creature. It gains death touch and indestructible until end of turn. Oh, that was a typo in the translation. It clearly says plus one, plus one. Okay, that makes more sense. Next up, Alondo the Seer. Ooh, he a big, large, thick, husky boy. Or it's just the robe, but he's just got mountains of body armor. Okay, could be either. So anyway, Donald Glover here is a four-cost green-blue 3-5 legendary creature human shaman. And he has a short novel that I believe is going to be canon in the D&D universe written on his card. Let me try to burn through it. Tap him, draw a card, then exile a card from your hand, and then put a number of time counters on it equal to its mana value. It gains when the last time counter is removed from this card. If it is exiled, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. If you cast a creature spell this way, it gains haste until end of turn. Then remove a time counter from each other card you own in exile. So what does it do? I don't know. I totally glazed over what halfway through that, and I'm not going to read it again. Thanks, wizards. I think I vaguely remember something about free casting, probably. I don't know. So next up, Shadowheart. Dark Juice. Ju just, why can't I read that? Justicier, obviously. Oh my gosh. Anyway, legendary creature, human, elf, cleric, four cost, black, three, four. And if you pay two and tap it, sacrifice another creature, draw X cards where X is that creature's power, and choose a background. Okay, I mean, it's a sack outlet, but we have those for like zero and one. So two on a four cost, that's a little high. I mean, you're kind of playing it to get the choose a background thing, but then like, why'd they make it a rare? But then again, it's an elf, like, I don't know. This might be one of the first ones that I, I saw. Well, not first, but okay. One of the very few I saw that people might actually put in a commander deck. I honestly think this is built just entirely as a draft set. For all I know, it, it started as like Conspiracy 3 or something. Kind of seems like it. Uh, next up, Tiradora de Primera Elfica. Is that really what they're called, Elfica? Well, Elfie the Super Elf here is actually Elven Sharpshooter. Uh, it's a three-cost green elf ranger with reach, and its power is equal to the number of creatures you control. Its toughness is two, and whenever it enters the battlefield, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature with flying and opponent controls. This is an amazing card in a go-wide dumper deck, which... I'd say traditionally is green-white, but it's commander. You could probably pull it off with anything. I've seen white-red. I've seen mono-red. I think I've seen everything at this point. You can go black zombies for all I care. But, uh, one, it's an elf. Two, it's a go-wide card. Three, it, it takes something out that's flying in, in green, which that's huge. This is absolutely amazing. Which is why they chose to make it an uncommon, because God forbid there'd be any value in this. But, like I said, silver lining, you're going to be able to actually afford this card. Next up, Treasure Keeper. What the heck is that? Oh, it's an upside-down um, pyramid head mech from Silent Hill. That makes sense. Uh, so, 4 cost 3-3, three, three, artifact creature construct, and when it dies, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-land card with mana value 3 or less. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Oh my gosh, you can just char it with this. Are they kidding me? And put all revealed cards not cast this way on the bottom of your library in a random order. Well, at least it costs 4. Because this is pretty broken. Which is why they made it an uncommon. Next up, Agent of the Iron Throne. So it's another background, three cost legendary enchantment, uh, black, and commander creatures you own have when an artifact or creature you control is put in the graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent loses one life. 
You know, I want to see the background of NPC Shopkeeper just for the memes, but I think we've actually already seen something like that. It was like Merchant or something. Well, you know, Death Trigger, yeah, in the commander slot, I could see it. So finally, we've got Kadira, Collar of the Small. And of course, her flavor text is, I'll make you fun-sized. Shout out to anyone who got that reference. Anyway, it's a three-cost white-green 3-3 three, three legendary creature orc ranger, and it has trample, and whenever Kadira Collar of the Small deals combat damage to a player, for each token you control, create a 1-1 one, one white rabbit creature token. Oh my gosh. So that's almost another Scoot Swarm. I mean, it's a little narrower because it's not just lands, but it's it's almost as awful. You could just make her your commander. I mean, this I, I don't like this at all. So the worst part, and I really mean the worst part about this card, is that Wizards of the Coast has came out and said, this is paraphrase, but they, they did say it, they think that orcs are black people. Not only that, but they think that everybody thought that, and then it turned out, according to literally everyone on the internet, that nobody thinks that but them, a bunch of stuck-up rich white people from Seattle. Alrighty then, good job, wizards. They're just batting a thousand over there on uh, racial hot take, as they're batting zero on hiring black people. Yeah, look it up. Anyway, that's it for today's spoilers, but there's more to come, and they get pretty crazy. I kind of glanced at the other ones. Also, if you're following these in order, you'll find out, as I did halfway through this, that I completely and utterly skipped a day. So, we'll be filling that in later, so watch for that, and I'll see you guys next time.